A former federal lawmaker, Kayode Oladili, is asking Nigerians to support the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission and other anti-graft agencies to win the war against corruption. The former chairman of the House of Representatives Committee on Financial Crimes made the call on the occasion of this year's Anti-Corruption Day with a theme, Uniting the World Against Corruption. He asked Nigerians to take ownership of the fight against corruption and see the war as a collective responsibility because of its damaging effects on national development. Mr. Oladele explained that the people's participation in anti-corruption crusade is supported by the UNCAC's Article 13, which mandates each state party to take measures to promote active involvement of individuals and groups in the prevention and fight against corruption. And for more on this, I'm being joined by the Chief Executive Officer, Lead Network Africa, Chukuma Okenwa, and he joins me from Enugu State. Good to have you on the news at 10 this evening. So first off, let's have your assessment on the country's fight against corruption in recent times. What do you make of it? Yeah, I think uh, there have been like a renewed commitment uh, towards the fight against corruption. And to put it into perspective uh, universally, Corruption is defined as the abuse of public office for private gain. Uh, so when the widest, in the wider context, when we look at corruption, we are not just talking about maybe a situation maybe where uh, a woman that sells a cup of dairy decides to uh, measure the dairy with the back of the cup. We're actually talking about like the role of public officers that can impact largely on the, the population, on the citizens, and you know, leads to some outcomes like poverty, denial of public facilities, maybe when you have diversions of funds that are meant to build roads, if it is diverted into some other ventures, then of course that is corruption. Indeed, but you know, today happens to be anti-corruption day and the EFCC chairman held a rally to, well, mark the day and also vow to tackle corruption public looters and all of that. How confident are you about the EFCC's decision to tackle this, this uh, problem? I want to see the role of EFCC in tackling this challenge as very striking, as a very strategic, even as the Conference of State Parties commenced their meeting today in Atlanta, Georgia. You know, the UNCAC, which is uh, the UN Convention Against Corruption, is a platform that involves 190 nations, and then of course uh, civil societies, individuals, platforms like Transparency International that encourage the need, you know, for transborder collaboration in fighting corruption. Because we know that sometimes, like for instance, when we talk about either embezzlement, siphoning of funds, or moving funds from one border beyond, you know, borders, it involves other actors beyond the nation. So to contain corruption effectively. You are talking about, first and foremost, all the state parties for which Nigeria is one of it, you know, being able to replicate some of the recommendations that will, some of it will come as regulatory framework, putting the legal framework in work, institutional integrities, and then as well as collaboration, mutual legal assistance with some other uh, state parties. And with that, we can have more efficiency in combating corruption. And in talking about transborder collaboration, how do you see this working, especially in a country where we are yet to fully see a successful prosecution of individuals who have been tried for corruption cases? Talk about what, we ha what happened last year where the former governors of uh, Plateau were convicted but then released due to, uh, by, by the president, former president, uh, President Mohamed Buhari. What do you make of this and how do you think we can you know, handle this issue, taking a cue from what you mentioned about uh, trans-border collaboration? Of course, strengthening uh, the criminal justice system would be uh, Pavoita, the first thing that Nigeria must have to focus, about, focus on, because just like every form of international collaboration, you have to talk about your domestic strength, which is going to be a reflection of your diplomacy. So when we are talking about like helping other nations to contend that true collaboration, then we have to first of all fix the challenges 
And this, of obviously, will not just be handled uh, by the law enforcement agencies uh, like the, the EFCC. You also want to talk about the, the role of the judiciary. You talk about the role of the leadership, like the person of the president, in also ensuring and political players that such processes are not stalled for political reasons. There has to be that demonstrated political will for issues of corruption to be promptly tried and as well as justice properly served. All right, let me quickly ask you this. What are the likely implications and consequences if this is not nipped in the bud? Final thoughts on this. Certainly, like we've seen over time, like, I mean, the major reason why Nigeria has struggled as a nation it's simply because even the funds that come to us as a nation, either through the revenues generated or through the ones that we borrowed, are not rightfully deployed into developing, into producing outcomes that will translate the lives of the citizens to better outcomes. So if that should continue, then of course, you know, the ministries, departments and agencies, which obviously should be the point of call to touch people's lives, make implementations as seen in the budget, we obviously turn into conduits, and that means that rather than progressing as a nation, we retrogress. But I am convinced that with uh, the current administration and the border language so far, and the role of the EFCC and Nigeria being a member of the Conference of State Parties with a renewed commitment of the global fight against corruption, that certainly we are going to need corruption at the board. All right, and that's a fine place to live it. Chief Executive Officer, Lead Network Africa, Chukuma Okenwa, thank you so much for your insights on the news at 10 this evening. You're welcome.